All right, hey everybody, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to make a racing game where you will race around the track and try to avoid hitting the grass. If you do, it'll, oh no, and then you get back on track. Oh, I hit it again, hit it again, and I get there and I finished. And you can set different laps if you want, just I didn't want you to watch me driving around the circle forever, so I put it onto one lap, but it should be fun, so let's see how we can do this. I am going to go into Scratch, and I'm going to make a new game. And there I am, I don't need Scratchy, so I'm just going to get rid of him. And I will call this one Vroom, oops, not all caps, Vroom Shakalaka. Is there a C there? I don't know. In an ode to NBA Jam. I'm sure that's spelled. Ah, uh, there should be two Ks. Sorry if I spelled that wrong, but it's all right. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to go into backdrops, and I just want to get some nice grassy backdrops. So I am going to color this green. And now that I have that, I need to lay some road over my grass. So I am going to make a new sprite. And you could do this in a couple different ways. I am just going to make a circular track, but if you wanted to use the paintbrush and make it a bit more unique and not as circular, you are certainly welcome to do that as well. The game will work exactly the same way. I am just going to go to the circle though, and I want to make this as thick as possible. And I'm going to draw a, whoops, having it be, Green wouldn't make much sense. I'm gonna have it be gray, typical color of asphalt. And just play around with it, get it how you want. There we go, click off it, and I have my track. Now, I need to get a car, and I could choose them from the sprite library, but I think I am going to go try to find a model on the internet. So I'm just going to do race car top down and race car top down and clip art. Go to images. And this red one looks pretty good. I like that. So I'm just going to save it. Save image as. I'll save that onto my desktop. I'll call it car though to be more specific. There we go. Oops, that's my other one. And now if I just go here to upload, I can upload that sprite. And I'm gonna desktop, and there we go. And I have my car. However, there are obviously several problems with this car. The most pressing of which is that it has this white background around it, and I certainly don't want that. So what I could do is if I go into costume, Scratch has this new feature that allows you to remove the background. And how it works is that you basically just pick the tool and you draw around the object that you want to keep. You don't want to do it around the background that you want to get rid of. Just draw around the background that you want to keep. So if I go like this, and you want to miss on the inside and on the outside. So even if we don't, like this might not get everything. Let's see. See, so it just kind of missed that mirror right there. So if you go down here, just click on it, it will update it. There we go. And now it has the whole car. And you can see it's already taken it out right there. So I'm done with that. And that is way easier than the way of doing it before, which involved a lot of erasing. It can get very tedious. But that is obviously much too monstrous for my tiny little racetrack. So I am going to make it smaller. That should be good. And I'm gonna get it right up there, right around the starting line. Now I need to indicate somehow that there is a starting line when we're gonna keep track of the laps. So I'm just going to go back into here in my line. I don't need it quite that big. And just drop black right there. And perfect. And that's where it will start. Now I want it starting about right there, and I always want it starting at this angle. You're gonna see that our car is going to change its angle as we go, but we always need to make sure that it's pointing in that direction. So I want it going to that position, and I want it pointing in 90 directions, or 90, 
90 degrees when the green flag is clicked. So now even if I draw, um, even if I move it like that and it turns around, it will always go back there and start like that. Now we are going to move our car by having it move in steps. And the key difference between moving it by steps and moving the X and the Y is that steps always have it go forward. So if it was going, moving a certain number of steps, it would just be going like this because that is the way that the car is pointed. If I were to turn it and I had it move a certain number of steps, it would go in that direction. That is different than moving it by X and by Y, where even if it's pointed in that direction, if I moved it by X, it would go like that, no matter which way it was pointed. So I am going to make a variable. We're going to control this with um, a variable called speed, which will allow us to change how quickly our car is going. So when the green flag is clicked forever, we always want it moving by speed steps so that if right now it's zero so that when, like it's not moving at all but it, as we increase speed it will go quicker and quicker and I always want to set the speed to zero at the very beginning now we want to if the up arrow is pressed we want the car to go faster and if the down arrow is pressed we want to put on the brakes so if I go to up arrow if the up arrow is pressed, I just want to change speed by one. And then to make sure it doesn't go too quickly, I want to wait 0.1 seconds after that. I always want it checking if the up arrow is pressed. So I'm going to wrap it in a forever loop. And then I am going to have my when green flag click. Now I'm going to duplicate it so that I can have it slow down too. So if the down arrow is pressed, we want it changing by negative one. So now when I press the green flag, it can go forward. If I go put on the brakes and then it will go backwards and it will go as quickly as speed is. Right now it's one, it's going very slow. It'll double the speed and so on. Now we got our car moving, but it is only going straight and on a circular track, that is not the controls that you want your car to have. So we are going to use the turn right and the turn left features here. But 15 degrees would just be way too sharp of a turn. So I'm going to make it two and two. And we want our if then statements. And if the left arrow is pressed, we wanted to turn it by two degrees to the left. And if the right arrow is pressed, we wanted to turn two degrees to the right. We always want it checking if the right arrow or the left arrow is being pressed and we want this started when the green flag is clicked. I am going to control click, clean it up to make it look a little better. Okay, so now we have, oops, let me press the green flag again. We have a car that can move around just like that in a circle. But as you can see, it is just clearly not following the rules of the race. And we can't trust that the people that are gonna be playing our game are just gonna automatically always go on the road because who knows who will be doing this. So we need to come up with some kind of feature that will cause them to not go onto the green. So we are gonna have it, if they touch the green, we are going to have them spin in a circle. It'll stop the car, then have them spin in a circle, much to their chagrin. So I, with the car, I wanna have it, if it is touching, the color green and how you change the color in here, this could be a little confusing, it's not terribly intuitive, is that if you press that, just have it go over whatever color you want. And then there we go, I click there. And now if it is touching the color green, it's going to be a combination here. It is going to repeat this pattern 12 times and it is going to turn 30 degrees. So if you repeated it more times and had it turn less, the spin would be slower. And if you repeated it less times, but had to turn more, the spin would be faster. You just want to make sure that these multiplied together equal 360 so that it ends up in the same direction that it started out in. 
Now we also, we don't want it to keep on going once it's spinning. So we need to make sure that we are set it, uh, spending, setting speed to zero once it touches the color green. And we also like, if we just had it touching, if it's touching the color green, it will spin out. Like that would just keep on happening because once it gets out of its spin, it's still touching that color green. And that would be, become very frustrating. So what we wanna do is we wanna wait until it is not touching the color green and then it will check for these things again. I always want it checking if it is touching the color green and we want this starting when the green flag is clicked. So now when the green flag is clicked, if it does touch the color green, it will stop the car to have it spin around and then it will wait until it's not touching the color green. So while you're getting back on the road, it won't be checking for this anymore. And then once you are not touching that color green anymore, it will go back up to the top of the loop and check if it is touching this. So I press the green flag and I go into there. Oh no. And I get to re kind of, oops, reposition my cars even with that. Wait, it's still a little tricky, but we're better than before. Now we have a problem where, okay, I have like that, but I can just go over here and that's definitely not what we want. We don't want the user to be able to sacrifice just one spin out to be able to completely cut around our course. So we need to come up with a way to check that they are in the correct position. So we are going to check that they get past this point right here, below this point right here, and to the left of this point right here. And in order to do that, we're basically just going to make a loop that waits for all of these conditions to be met. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna make a variable that keeps track of the number of laps that we have done. So I'm gonna call that variable laps. And when the green flag is clicked, I want to set laps to one, not to zero, because we wanna start on lap number one. And this will be a repeat block. I want it to repeat, you could have this repeat really as many number of laps as you want, and you could change it depending on what kind of, how long you want your game to go. I will just have it be two laps just to make things a little easier. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that it is to the right of this point right here, and that is X155. If I go into my control and I wait until, the X position of the car is greater than 155. Now, nothing in this loop will happen until it is past this point, until it is to the right of this point. Now we're gonna add another wait until block that nothing will happen until it is below this point. So that is Y negative 99. If I get my control there and I go wait until And I want to wait until the Y position is less than negative 99. And I want to wait until it is to the left of there. So it is at the X position is less than negative 170. And finally, I just want to wait until it is touching the finish line, so it is touching the color black. Let's go over there. And after it touches the color black, I want to increase laps by one. And then at that point, it will go up to the top of the loop again and we'll wait for all these conditions to be met until it changes the number of laps. So I'll start at one, Let's see if I can do this. It's a little thin right there. I might wanna make my road a little wider or my car a little smaller. But... And you see, boom, it changes to two. If I were to keep on going, it would eventually change to three on the third lap, but I want it to just end after that point. So after it ends, I just wanna broadcast a message and I'll call this end. And I'll make a new sprite that just has the words finished in it. 
And you want to, if you're writing, you almost always want to do it in vector. It expands way better because it's done with like mathematical formulations that will, despite like no matter how big they get, they will still hold true to form. Whereas bitmap is in pixels. And if you expand it, it just gets blurrier. So you almost always want to do text in vector. And I'll just have finish with an exclamation point. And you can see as I make this bigger, if you hold down shift, it'll do it proportionally. You can see even as I make it much bigger, it still looks sharp and good. And I'm gonna have another one that indicates that we have made the highest score that there is. Another good thing about vector is after you've drawn it, you could get around and manipulate it. So like if I were to go into there, I could still edit what it says. Whereas if I did it in bitmap, once I write it, it's pretty much done. And this one's gonna be finish and high score. And I want another exclamation point. You can see it's good that I did vector because now I could just go back into there. Cool. So we want when the green flag is clicked, we want that to hide. Yeah, what's that? We want to hide, and then when I receive end, we want it to show. Now we need a way to see how well we are doing. So we want to make a timer, and I am just going to put that over here, just because it's a little less crowded. It's going to make a new variable called time. And for this one, we, we're not going to iterate by one second. We're going to do it by a 10th of a second, just to kind of get it a bit more precise. So I am going to go just forever. I want to change time by 0.1 second. And then I want to wait 0.1 seconds. And just when the green flag is clicked. Now when I press the green flag, it will go up like that. And it'll keep track of what my time is. If I go back here, when I receive the end, I basically, I wanna check my time against whatever the highest score is. I'm gonna make a new variable and I am going to call this one high score or low time or whatever you want. And for some of you, there'll be a cloud variable here. What this will allow you to do is that if someone else is playing your game, it will check the high score. So it will, like if someone that was playing your game in Canada got a score of seven seconds and then another person playing your game in Cambodia got a score of five seconds, their high score would show up. If you don't have this, you really don't need it. You could just, it, it won't show up for a high score outside of the people playing on your local computer, or you can just ignore this part and not even do a high score if you don't want to. But I, since I have this here, I'm going to make this as a cloud variable. It gives me that little message there, great. So when I receive end, I am going to have an if then else statement. And if my score, if my time, if it is less, remember, because this is a racing game, we want a lower time is better. It's like golf or something. If the time is lower than the high score, then we want to set the high score to the time. If it is not, we don't want to do that, but there's something else that we want to do, and that's we want to change the costume. I have costume one right here, that is just my normal finish, and I have costume two, that is my high score. If I go, I want to switch costume to high, I want to switch my costume to costume two if that's the high score. And I just want to have it be costume one if that is not the case. And finally, at the end, I just want to stop everything. And finally, right now, my high score is zero, which is going to be pretty impossible to beat. So I'll just have that be up there on 27. Let's see if this works. Everything should be set. Uh, 
Lap two. We got one more lap to go. I'm doing pretty good here. This is, oh, should beat that high score of 27. Boom, finish high score, and it sets it to 20.21. And that is pretty much it for our game. Oh, if you didn't have the high score too, you could just kind of put it show, stop all, get rid of that, and that's fine. It works just as well. I don't worry too much about it. But that is our game. I hope that was fun and educational, and you were able to make something out of that. You should see if you can try to make a bit more or a bit more elaborate version of this having more laps or maybe multiple cars or different laps or sound effects or like shooting stuff like Mario Kart or something or whatever your heart desires. But I hope that was helpful and have a good one. Later.